welcome to Leap Taken. Here at Leap Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft-related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. And today, we're going to talk about how you can script your way into your most magical life, um, into the future that you desired. I know this works because I've done it. I've done it before, and I've had great success um, in the past. Now, if you follow this channel... <laughs> Please know that um, I believe on a layered approach to spell work, especially for bigger things. So like um, a big move, you want a house, you want to bring a person into your life, a baby, you know, whatever the situation is, you know, big things that kind of need a layered approach. I call that spells on spells on spells. So part of my spells on spells on spells is um, scripting. <laughs> That's a big component of it, actually. So I am in the process of working on my own big changes. So with that, um, I'm basically doing something I've done before and um, going to do it again with um, some more things that I've learned over the past as well. But this, let's just stick to the scripting for now. So as I said, scripting is very effective. I believe scripting uh, as a form of manifesting has... It definitely has its way um, within witchcraft. Uh, it fits directly in. We already doing do it anyway when we write petitions. Um, basically, when you write anything, like a statement, affirmations, things of that nature, on some level, that is scripting. Now, scripting does have more nuance, though, so that's what I'm going to get into right now. Uh, so the overall mechanics, high level is you typically want to write as if you're presently experiencing whatever it is that you're scripting. So um, you want to avoid words like not, don't, can't, or wish, or going to. I'm going, you know, right, oh, I'm going to go see, you know, my husband. No, you, were, you wouldn't write it that way. I'll get into examples in a moment. Um, so consistency with scripting does matter. <laughs> Can you have uh, the same effects of scripting if you don't do it consistently? I mean, technically, yes, but it might not happen in the time frame that you desire. I find that this is something that you're committed to. Uh, that's the sac mm, offering, not sacrifice. Well, in a way, it is kind of sacrificing of your time and, or offering of your time. Um, to sit down in every morning or every night or at some point during the day to just write a few sentences, a paragraph, or maybe fill up a page. Now, you can choose to write the same thing over and over again, kind of keep writing this scene until you live that scene in your present reality um, to match up. However, I don't do it that way. I'm writing about the same occurrence usually or this future life, I write it at different points. So I like to do the morning and then um, <laughs> like maybe I'll come back in and finish it out like a story in the afternoon and then the night. And then I'll start over in the morning again. I like to change locations, especially if part of, you know, for me, I'll share some of it, um, travel. So I, I know that I'm going to write from different places, you know, or you hear me, I'm already claiming I'm right. So I'm right, by the way, I, I write <laughs> anyway. So in my scripting and I'm already like enraptured in it, it's I'm claiming it. See, that's how deep I am into it. But I write when I script, I write from different locations, especially like I said, because of traveling, my home, this home that I envision parts of the home, places in the home, spaces in the home, and that sort of stuff, right? And I did this before, and it was very effective. Um, I would be doing, for me, nightly. Nightly is is good for me. It's kind of like the last thing I think about. It doesn't have to be a lot. I might, some nights, come on, you're tired, you might write a sentence. If you skip a night or two, it's not, just pick it back up again. Scripting can... I mean, for me, I think it's almost like an alternative to um, traditional visualization, although technically the way my mind works, I don't know how it is for you. When you write a story, um, 
I'm seeing it in my mind as I'm writing it out. So technically I'm still visualizing. I think it's an alternative more to like visualization, meaning a vision board, like something like that. I mean, you could do both. However, if you're not much of a writer, the best thing I can tell you is just work with vision boards, but maybe scripting is not for you. Scripting is not going to be for everybody. Everyone doesn't have the same literacy rate, and that's not like um, a shady thing to say. That's just facts. It's just true. We all, you know, I'm not ableist. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, and I totally understand that, you know, everyone's not on the same level. So scripting might not make sense for certain people. And for others, you know, go at it. If, if, if it doesn't, by the way, um, again, vision board. Vision board is your friend. <laughs> Um, and you can make more than one about different aspects in the same way that I'm scripting daily. You could be setting up like Pinterest and spending, you know, some time throughout the day, adding new pins of this future life that you want. So how do you script? Um, well, <laughs> for me, I like to go to, I, I mean, ideally at night, but like on the weekend or if I have some time, um, or extended weekend like we just had, <laughs> I like to be able to um, be in a, a place that I feel very comfortable right now. That's out back for me because I've set that up as my little oasis. We're still setting up because I'm not done um, as my little oasis. So I'll sit out there and I love bringing in the component of um, the sun and having um, that energy. I feel warm and energized as well. Uh, so I like to go, if I go outside, then I'm going to script first. I'm not going to sit out for a while because, you know, it, the sun can also deplete you. So like when I first get out there, I like to sit out there and write. Um, and once I do, I begin from a sincere space of gratitude and positivity. You can't fake it. And I know I'm, I'm someone who says that you can fake it till you make it. You're not going to be able to fake it till you make it with this because it's just you and your thoughts. So this is not fake. You are writing about something that is in the future. You are writing about something that is coming to pass. It's already happening on the timeline of your life. You just haven't caught up to it yet. It is real. It's not your imagination. You're not just dreaming. You're not um, making things up. This is the timeline of your life. Now, where things kind of can go a little different is that you may not, when you're scripting, you're not scripting the path to get to where your this future life is. So that, that's where things could go, you know, wonky. <laughs> You know, kind of like um, your dream was to travel the world for a year and you just needed to have your finance in order. So in present day, after you've done all the scripting about this and writing all the things you would want to go, the places you'll go and your experience as, as if you're experiencing it in real time and you're writing that. However, in your actual present time, you know, you get laid off and you get a severance package. They give you the option to pay out over weeks or take the severance package and, you know, for the whole thing, which pays you out for like, I don't know, six months of your salary. So you figure you can stretch that for a year and that's how you go. So granted, you have no job uh, to come back to, but that wasn't what you asked for. You asked for an opportunity to be able to travel the world with money. See what I mean? So... <laughs> All those experiences, all those things you wrote about, you, you, you're, that's on the timeline you get there, but you can't get stuck on how you fast forward or how, how you get to that point. That's tricky with magic, with witchcraft, with casting spells. That is tricky for most people because they really want to control that. I know. <laughs> they really want to control the how. And that kind of throws you off with even getting what you want if you're stuck on the how. That's so hard because we are taught from the times we are young to focus on the how. You got a good grade so you can get into college, right? You can get through, you got to graduate college so you can get a good job. You got to get a good job 
so that you can eventually retire and, or in the meantime, take care of your family, buy a house, you know, all those life goals and stuff we're supposed to aim for. Um, it's, it's this idea that you have, you ha you're very much aligned with the how, because this leads to this leads to this leads to this. Um, and honestly, for a good part of the population of the world, that's not how you operate. That's not how we think. And for more spiritual minded folks, um, that order may not make sense. You might have lived that. I mean, I know on some level I've participated in that because I sort of was brought up to do that. Um, but now <laughs> I'm more, and, and a lot of it comes with maturity and age. You, you kind of just fit into this space where it's like, you really can't get caught up on the how. You can spend, you can waste time worrying about how, how, how you're going to make this accomplish this, how this is going to happen. Honestly, it's a, it's less stressful <laughs> to just worry about, not worry, but just focus on experiencing. Focus on what will it feel like when you meet your dream person, when you meet your soulmate? What would it feel like when you finally set eyes on the ocean? You never actually seen the ocean in, in real life before. What will it feel like when you are on um, this trip that you've been wanting to take since for as long as you could remember, um, what's it going to feel like? What's the food going to taste like? Uh, how will the people look? What, what's the landscape looking like? What kind of colors do you see? Do you smell anything? That's the other thing. You want to use all of your senses when you're writing. So I want to get into the scripting a little bit more. So as I mentioned, begin from a place of sincerity with gratitude and positivity. Use present tense. OK, picture yourself in this situation as you are experiencing it in real time. You want to focus it that way. Um, again, using all of your senses, you want to write your experience as you're experiencing it. You know, if you want it always to live in a big new brand new house, just built custom just for you. What does a new house smell like? What does a new build smell like? Go find that scent. <laughs> if you don't know, make it up. Um, most likely you already know. <laughs> but I know that smell. I love that smell, by the way. New house smell. <laughs> um, it's, a kind of, it's like wood paint, <laughs> basically. Chemical, a little bit chemically. I don't know. I like the, I like the smell. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> yeah, the smell. What do you hear? Uh, is there food involved? Are you tasting or having your first glass of wine, some champagne? What does that taste like? Um, what do you feel when you run your hands across the surface of the wall? You know, the the counters or something like that. Um, you know, you get it. Hopefully, and then. Uh, Focus only on what you want. So positive statements only. I cannot, you know, some of us are better at this than others. Some people really do struggle with not writing or thinking from a negative point of view. If you are someone or you don't think you are, tr you've never tried scripting, try it. It's, you will be chastising yourself when you first start because you want to say, oh, I, you know, you might start off, um, I'm driving my uh, Tesla. Let's say you, all, you want a Tesla. I'm driving my brand new Tesla off the lot. I, you know, the leather seats feel great. It's buttery soft. The new car smell is intoxicating. Oh, I, you know, I feel like I'm fine. Oh yeah, this is what I'm gonna say. Um, I'm going to, no, how do I wanna say this? Now I'm trying to, see, I can't even do it wrong. I've chastised myself so much. I can't even say it the wrong way. Um, I'm glad I got, the car in white and not in black. Don't do that. Why would you say that? Why are we bringing in a not word? Why are we bringing in something negative? Or I'm going to drive to my house. No, I am driving to my house. Um, I'm trying to think of the negative words. Um, I can't wait. Nope. No, I can't wait. You're experiencing. You don't do that. Like, oh, I can't wait to show my friends. I'm on my way to show my friends. My friends are already, or, or you stop there right next paragraph. My friends love my car. They're so happy for me. Um, I wish, 
or you start off, I wish I could have a Tesla. Why would you wish <laughs> you're scripting? This is your story as you're experiencing it. You're not wishing. Um, so don't do that. Don't, don't do those things. So scripting can get really intense. It can go deep, um, but that's up to the person that's writing. And, and at each time you sit down, it could be that uh, soul story. I know the last time, which for me that I uh, was working on a big thing <laughs> to manifest into my life, which is I'm sitting in that big thing right now, by the way, <laughs> this home, uh, a cottage. Um, I remember looking for a home. I, if you don't know my story, I moved from Florida to Arizona in 2019. I always get confused. Yes, 2019. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll, I keep thinking it's 18. I get weird about the years before tw around 2020. <laughs> I feel like something happened with space time. But anyway, so yeah, in the spring of 2019, I moved to Arizona from uh, South Florida. Huge difference in environment, probably. You know, I, by the way, my family and I drove cross country. So we drove from South Florida to Arizona. So, you know, it was an adventure. Um, but yeah, when I got here, we all, first we lived in this condo and um, it was a temporary uh, situation, kind of like an extended Airbnb situation. And then um, the whole purpose was we had to find, you know, a place to live. So we were there for a few months, not very long, just long enough to find a place. And um, I was scripting nightly. I was scripting nightly um, and I wrote all the little details. I mean, I had time. Let me tell you, that wasn't, I wasn't sure if I wanted a house, but I didn't want an old house. <laughs> I didn't want, I wanted a new house. I wanted a new house and I wanted the house to have certain design elements and I got that in this house. And I wrote those design elements. I wrote about the white cabinetry, the tall white cabinets with the silver or, you know, um, well, I, I don't know if I said silver, I know, but like the handles. <laughs> um, I talked about, I wrote about the countertops that I wanted. I'm lo it's fine, I'm looking over, I see that. Um, even that was just one end scene. And then I would write like stories that were occurring in my life being in that kitchen and um some of those stories haven't actually happened but the the structure happened <laughs> then um i would write script out like waking up in the morning and having this ideal life in this home now i will tell you this i have experienced some of what i scripted the story part of it like i'm in the structure that i saw in my mind's eye Imagine my surprise, by the way. So I come in, the agent walks us in, and we look around. At the time, my daughter, we were scouting. It was she, you know, it was always she and I, it seems like throughout the years. I have other, I was married, had another child as well. But for some reason, she and I, <laughs> this is not the first time that we did this, that we went scouting for a place. Um, because at the time when I was married, my husband worked during the day and it wasn't, he couldn't keep leaving and everybody only wanted to show you stuff like during the week. So anyway, <laughs> so we walked in to this place and it felt huge because it's just one big open living space. Um, but when I first walked in, I just saw the living, what would be the living and dining areas and the kitchen is like around the corner. And when I walked and saw that kitchen, I had to keep it together. I had to keep my face and my emotions in check because I was literally in shock. Actually, I didn't even have to trouble. Uh, tr I had to remember to talk. And my daughter sort of took over the conversation because what I wanted was right there in my face. It was like a miracle. That was like magic on a hundredth level. I could not believe that I manifested like in real, like I'm standing like, is this happening? Like, am I really seeing what I think I'm seeing? And then like even the bedroom, like the bathroom and certain details and it's just crazy. And then I had these, I, I was scripting about having a craft 
room, space, office, whatever. <laughs> um, I knew I wanted it all in one place. And I kind of had this idea that it would be like in another part of the house. Like that's what I saw in my mind's eye. But funny enough, <laughs> I have a dedicated room for my witchcraft and my office. Um, so I'm very grateful for that because that happened. That happened. Um, I moved here without furniture. Uh, although I had a bedroom, but we got rid of all of our furniture. So we were going to buy furniture when we got here, which we did. So I love putting together a home. <laughs> so I got a chance to do that. That's something I manifested as well. Uh, the type of furniture as well, something I manifested. Um, it's amazing to me. I'm sitting here talking about this now. It never, it's old for me. Um, that that happened. I'm so like, there are some days I do get overcome with emotion because I, I still, I believe, but I'm like still in shock that it happened the way it did. And since then, that's why I'm saying you can't get caught up in the how. So here I am now, I've done all that. And I'm very, I'm in a place of, of gratitude, sincere gratitude, because I'm looking around at what I manifested. I'm living what I scripted. Okay. So I have the audacity to do it again. <laughs> the audacity to try it again. So on this, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see me just sharing little bits. I won't go, I mean, I'm a witch and you have to keep some things mystery, but you'll see little bits and parts <laughs> of my approach to spells and spells and spells. So I'll introduce you to some of the things that I do to bring on these big changes, um, manifesting big things into my life. Some things, honestly, it scares even me um, because I'm not obsessed with the how. So now I'm like, <laughs> who's to say how it's all going to come together? I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not even going to let that be an issue for me. I'm too busy scripting how it feels, how it tastes, how wonderful it smells, how it feels, um, how it looks. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. So I'm not going to get caught up on that. So scripting works, guys. Listen, to my witches out there, if you want to kick things up a notch, listen, I'm still doing my spells. I'm still, you know, I'm working candles. Uh, I have herbal things. I... Um, Oh, boy, what else am I doing? I'm let me think it all. It's like I'm enchanting certain objects. I'm making talismans. Um, I'm using uh, words of affirmation or words of power, uh, charms um, to activate things. I'm working sigils. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Even um, I'm using aromatherapy to conjure. You know, um, I'm using color magic. Uh, to conjure uh, things into existence or manifest. I prefer the term conjure, honestly, to conjure these things into my existence, into my present reality. And I do feel like it's really mysterious right now on everything. I feel like it's all really mysterious, but somehow, some way, I feel like things are coming to me. Um, and it's just a matter of me knowing exactly what I want knowing what I'm really trying to experience. That's another thing I want to point out. You need to have an idea of what you truly want. Don't be wishy-washy. Write the specifics. Um, write out, especially, okay, so the, where this is going to definitely come in handy is if you're talking about like manifesting a person. So if I was talking about manifesting a person into my life, right? A romantic partner, I would be saying, um, you know, I would, for me, okay. So I would be starting with, again, I kind of like a, I like a story. <laughs> so like the dating, the first date, I would write about the first date. I would write about how I felt. See how I'm doing here, how I felt, what I wore, what I looked like. Um, it's a very me-centered point of view. <laughs> um, how did I feel? What did I look like? What did I wear? How was my hair? What you know? What was colors did I have on? Um, what perfume? What did I smell like? And then location. Where where did we go? Did we have something to eat? What was the food like? Was it delicious? What was this? What did it sound like? Um, 
what did their voice sound like? Was it deep? Um, you know, was it like pick a character, someone in a movie <laughs> or something like that or in TV that you like um, and you love their voice? But, you know, oh, and he, but he looks like not but his voice is deep like this, this person. And and, you know, he looks with, you know, he's tall and he has you know, thick eyebrows like so-and-so, pick somebody with thick eyebrows, you know, and uh, he's so optimistic, like the character trait, just, you know, back in the day, people will say, make a list of the characteristics and attributes you want in your partner and manifest from there. I'm going to take, let's take it a step further. Let's, let's play, let's play this, this out in a story. Like, what is he, is he funny? You know, did he tell you a joke? Oh, you don't have to write the joke unless you know you want to. But, you know, um, you're laughing the joke. You can't stop laughing. You love when someone makes you laugh. So this is awesome. You you're having such a great time. Write about how when you got home after the date, how you were like crushing on this person, and you you know you're I'm calling my friends. Uh, you know I've call, I'm speaking to my friends and I'm telling them what's happening, and they're so excited for me. Um, my one friend did pull cards to see if this person is really my soulmate. Yes, after one date. So what? Nobody's going to read your book. <laughs> and then, you know, go up from there um, or fast forward, you know, to the wedding day. I would caution that. I think the the dating phase or the talking phase gets a bad rap. If this person, if you're conjuring this person, um, into your life, to you and you and theirs. That should be an enjoyable experience. I caution going straight to the wedding or straight to, you know, your your happy married life. Right in some nice stuff in between. I'm just saying, set, set yourself up for that a little bit. <laughs> What's that like for someone to just be lusting after you and to be falling in love with you? Write about that. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be wonderful to, to experience that? As someone who, I am twice married, let me tell you something. Don't underestimate that that getting to know you phase where emotions are building. It's it's cool to write about that part too. Um, it's not saying that you'll never get to that. You can get to the wedding and the kids and all that other, whatever else you want. Um, but <laughs> give yourself that space to, to conjure a relationship, a true, um, yeah, relationship. See it through, get that deep, get that focused. Uh, it's worth it. Now, I will just go over some quick pitfalls. I already talked about the negative words and coming with thoughts of negativity. So obviously avoid that. <laughs> um, the other thing is don't mention what you wrote about with others. It's okay if you are excited and you're talking to someone you trust and you say, oh my God, I've started scripting. I'm talking about my future life when I meet my future husband or when I buy my dream house or, um, you know, when I finally get to travel, you know, for the year, I'm, I'm writing about that and I feel like it's really working. That's a great conversation, fine. I would not read exactly what you wrote. <laughs> I would not read to them. Uh, what you wrote, no matter how trusting they are. Some people who love us are, yeah, you'll find that a lot with people with more grounded energy, a lot of like earth sign placements. <laughs> they tend to, um, you have to be careful because sometimes I feel like they're like human anchors. <laughs> they like sink you, sink your dreams, sink, sink it down. And I don't think it's a malicious and coming from a bad place. Sometimes we need those people in our lives when we're a little too impulsive and we think there's a sign in everything and we all, we think, oh, follow that, follow this. You know, we need somebody to be like, hey, tapped on the shoulder. You know, you're chasing a balloon, right? And you're like, oh, I thought it was my life, my new life. <laughs> you, know, you need people to kind of center you. So it's not a bad thing. I have people like that. Some, I have quite a few people like that in, in my life and... I don't tell them so much. I love them, but I can't tell them so many what things when I'm in, in the middle of working because they tend to go very practical minded and you know they're they're on the how. They're they're 
they're concerned with, well, how are you going to get there? And they'll even try to help you to get to this place you want. But they're going to be thinking about how. Well, you, you, you don't have a job, so how are you going to do this? Or, you know, you've um, only been working for <laughs> two weeks. How are you going to buy a house? You know, how is this going to happen? You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. So you need to um, maybe keep it to yourself. But that's like with anything with witchcraft, when you're practicing magic, you have to be careful on how much you share, because I'm not even speaking about anybody with a malicious intent, just people who know and love us. Sometimes they get caught up in the practicalities of life and they can, you know, say negative things. I mean, for especially if they are following a specific religion, you know, them saying, oh, I'm going to pray for her. And that things come, you know, the way I hope she gets what she wants. You know, it could be something as simple as that. But they just said they were going to pray for you. And let's say they're actually one of those people who don't just say it, but they actually try to pray for you. Um, they're calling on their, you know, their God to see fit to make this happen for you, whatever it is that you're trying to do, right? But you don't work with their God at all. Actually, you avoid their God. Um, so how do you think that's going to work? <laughs> um, you're petitioning and working with ancestors and maybe a, another, a, a different deity. That's a conflict. You see what I'm saying? You have to be careful with that. Um, just, just keep it close to your heart. Keep it in your book. And that's it. <laughs> and when you feel the need to share, like one thing started when things start happening, I would just share high level. Oh my God, that scripting thing works. You know how I was scripting and it's been, you know, I've been doing it like every night and you're telling somebody, you know, that you, that hopefully you can trust. And you're like, yeah, you know how I've been doing it every night. Guess what? It actually worked. I was able to do da, 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 you know, or I met this person or, you know, I got this opportunity to go here and, you know, they told me that, you know, I, they offer trips to some place, you know, at a discount rate or, you know what I mean? Something, whatever, like one thing is leading to another and you can see it as plain as day. Um, at that point, if somebody is kind of like, you know, being a bit of a train killer in that moment, the momentum is already there. They can only really mess with it so much, but use your discernment on the people that you talk to. If you know someone's kind of a negative Nelly, what are you sharing for? Even if you're sharing just to brag and to make them feel some kind of way to prove that your witchcraft works, it's not worth it because they're brick one. They got, they got their hooks in you because you care enough to do that. If you care enough to do that, then they can mess with your, your spell. They can throw things off. Um, yeah. Be careful with that because like, again, if you care enough about what they think to be telling them and proving something to them, they already got you. They already got you. Um, don't let that happen to you, by the way. <laughs> don't do that. But um, yeah, so that's all I got on scripting. Hopefully this has been helpful. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to tell you. I am statements. I am watering my plants and my 10,000 square foot home. I am swimming in my Olympic size swimming pool. I am sitting across the man of my dream from at the table uh, with the man of my dreams at the under end of the table. I am surrounded by everyone I love as I get this award. I am feeling so overcome with joy because I finally published my book. I am smelling the ocean and it's been so very long since I've come to the Mediterranean Sea and I'm finally here with my best friend and we're frolicking in the sand and the sky is blue, the water is see-through. I'm so happy. I am wearing the bikini I've always wanted to wear and I look gorgeous. I'm beautiful. You know, that sort of thing. Those are the examples that I'm talking about. And then expand from there. Um, so thanks again for watching. I'm Mika. This is Leap Taken. Please do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe. That's all that matters here. And uh, consider hitting the join button to join Leap Taken membership. Head on over to leaptaken.com. I offer services on my website. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. All right, bye.